1977, a small factory in Colvin Leicester got to work on something that would change the lives of countless people. Little did they realise that people were still care enough 40 years later to sit and listen to a guy waffle on about that product. This is the Star Wars Toy Podcast. Hello there. Yes, this is the Star Wars Toy Podcast. I'm Darth Mark, and this is episode 20. And on this episode, I'm going to be telling you about the Empire Strikes Back figures. And I'm going to be telling you a bit more about the Palatoy exhibition that I went to last week. But before that, as always, we have this. The Star Wars Tracker Report. Welcome to the latest market report for this week. The market activity is for the 26th of October to the 1st of November. And in all, 793 items were sold for a total of £51,301. I'll start with the top five accessories this week. And at number five, we have a 12-inch Boba Fett. Kenner Empire Strikes Back A picture box sold in the United Kingdom for £255. At number four, we have a Death Star, the Palatoy version, loose, no box. Sold in the United Kingdom for £280. Uh, number three, we have a turret and probot. Kenner, Empire Strikes Back here, Hoth scene. Sold in the United States for $375. Uh, number two, we have a speeder bike. An AFA-85. Return of the Jedi A, Ewok and a biker scout scene. Sold in the United Kingdom for £313. Certainly paid to have that graded. But at number one, we have a Cloud City playset, AFA 85, Empire Strikes Back A playset with four figures. It was a Kenner box, obviously. Sold in the United States for $3,850. On to the top five loose figures now. At number five, we have a Boba Fett UK G90. Kenner sold in the United Kingdom for £217. Uh, number four, we have Blue Snaggletooth, no dent. Kenner, sold in Australia for 427 Australian dollars. Uh, number three, we have a Blue Snaggletooth, no dent. Kenner, sold in the United Kingdom for £252. Uh, number two, we have R2-D2, pop-up lightsaber, UK G80. Kenner, sold in the United Kingdom for £265. And at number one, we have another pop-up lightsaber r2d2 kenner sold in the United kingdom for 273 pounds and that is going to be the featured figure of the week i don't love that figure myself i've got one in my cabinet and we've already seen him twice on this list and it will pop up see what i did there and i'm just going to check on the tracker itself to see what the position that r2d2 actually is at the moment in the past 12 months there was 55 sold uh, an average of £253. The minimum is £124, so if you're trying to get one for £124, uh, probably the uh, the sticker is probably pretty worn off. But the highest is £450. I think most of that is uh, paying for that lightsaber. The lightsaber is probably worth a bit more than the R2 itself. But the R2 by itself is quite expensive. I think you can pay about £100 just for the R2 itself. But as I say, that uh, lightsaber is... Getting the getting one that's um, legitimate and not a repro is quite difficult. So try and buy it from a reputable source. Mine cost me £250, so I was paying about the average. So I'm going to start the top five mock figures now. And uh, starting with R2-D2. Still a pop-up, but it's a droids version. AFA 85Y, Canada, droids 12A card, sold in the United Kingdom for £610. At number four, we have a Greedo, AFA 80, Palitoy, Return of the Jedi 70A, sold in France for €830. Euros. At number three, we have a Princess Leia Organa. But this one was a glass leak, Power of the Force 12A card. Sold in the United States for $1,100. At number two, we have a Darth Vader AFA. 
80Y on a Kenner Star Wars 12B card. Sold in the United States for $1,170. But number one, we have a Han Solo small head, AFA 80. On a Kenner Star Wars 12A card, sold in the United States for $1,536. So that's your Star Wars tracker for this week. As always, head out to www.starwarstracker.com to find out how much your vintage collection is worth. Penny for your thoughts. So we're going through the vintage figure line quite quickly now. We're going to the Empire Strikes Back. What I want to do is get to uh, the end of the Power of the Force line and maybe do the play sets and the vehicles before I go into the Power of the Force 2 line. But that will be uh, that'll be something we can uh, think about in the future. But for today, I'm just going to go through that my favourite line, the Empire Strikes Back line. Start with Lando Calrissian. You will get a lot of um, variants in this line, especially Lando Calrissian, where you got uh, the teeth version and the no teeth version. The no teeth version is slightly rarer. He came with these grey vinyl. Cape. It's, it's amazing how many figures actually had these vinyl capes and the Bespin blaster. He came on the Empire Strikes Back card, Return of the Jedi and Trilogo, with the Trilogo picture being slightly different from the other two. Next we have Princess Leia in a Bespin gown and again a, a variation this time with a turtleneck or a crew neck. These are variants, I'm assuming, because they'll have come from different factories. She comes again with a vinyl cape. This time there's a couple of variations on this vinyl cape. It's a uh, pinky, brownie, red <laughs> kind of colour. And uh, there are different patterns on these capes. She comes with the Princess Leia blaster, naturally. Which is quite expensive. Not as expensive as the original Princess Leia blaster, the black one. This is a This is a blue blue black version and it's just about 10 pound cheaper than the the total black version from the uh, late organa but still very sought after the cardbacks again have an empire strikes back return of the jedi and a tri logo version onto the stormtrooper in hoth battle gear and yes there is a variation on this one and i don't mean the one that was given away by the german magazine I'm referring to the two-eyed and the one-eyed version. Again, this came with a vinyl skirt this time, not a uh, cape. It went around his waist. And the Imperial Rifle. This figure also came on the Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, and Trilogo cards. Next up, we have Han Hoth, which did have a moulded legs variant, but didn't have a vinyl cape this time. He just had his Rebel Blaster. And this figure also came on the Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, and Trilogo cards. Next up, we have my favourite figure of all time, and that is Luke Bespin. Of course, we all know the variants of Luke. As we saw with the farm boy version, we had a brown hair, a blonde hair, and a ginger hair version. But you've also got variants of uh, things like the lightsaber being attached to the belt and not attached to the belt, just floating on his leg. At one point, I did have 10 different variations of Luke Bespin. But it comes with the lightsaber and the Rebel Blaster, which is probably why we, lo we all love this figure. And I think that's the one of the reasons that it was one of the first figures, maybe the first figure that you got two weapons with. IG-88 came a bit later with the... Uh, the rifle and the blaster, but having a lightsaber and a blaster was very special. And this version of Luke was always the one that I acted out the scenes with. And as to the card backs on this figure, it's quite interesting because on the Empire Strikes Back card, there was two different pictures. The one with like a full body walking on Bespin and one where he's looking around a corner. Then that was transitioned to the Return of the Jedi card. But then on the Trilogo card, you had him pointing his blaster from an opposite angle. So you had, in fact, three different pictures on this card back, but none of them holding his lightsaber. On to the Bespin security guard now, and we have variants of this. We have a big moustache and a small moustache version. 
and he came with the best spin blaster and again had three different card backs the Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi and Trilogo. Next up we have Bosk wearing his outfit he borrowed from the BBC prop star. No variations this time but he did have his own special to him rifle. Again just the three card backs this time Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi and Trilogo. Next up we have the Rebel Soldier. There are a couple of uh, colour variations on this but it's just uh, paint from the different factories I would have thought and surprisingly he came with a Bespin Blaster why I don't know but that is just the tip of the iceberg with accessories especially going into the Return of the Jedi line and again just the three card backs next up we have FX7 the medical droid not a lot could be said about this no variations we all bought him we never played with him but he's still pretty cool. And you can find him on the Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, and Trilogo card backs. Next up, we have IG-88. And yes, we're back to the legitimate variations here. We have a stiff-limbed and a flexible-limbed version. They are slightly different colours. One's a bit of a matte grey silver. And it is quite hard to, uh, to spot the difference. But as I said earlier, he came with two weapons, which was pretty cool. He came with his own variation of the rifle and an Imperial Blaster. And he also came on the three card box. And next up, just as you were getting over one medical droid, you got another one, 2-1-B. And let's face it, Luke couldn't be half of the man he was without these droids. And the thing about this figure is the uh, character they got the photos from at Kenner was only up to the waist. They had to make up his legs. And you can tell. And what's with that gas mask thing going to his mouth? Droids don't breathe, so why? I don't know. He gets a little pointy stick to go with it as well. And I don't want to know where that's been. So I'll move swiftly on and say that he was also on three different car backs. Next up, we have the Jedi Master himself, Yoda. Yes, Yoda had a couple of variations, as we know. There, some say there's three different coloured snakes, but I just think there's the brown and the orange. The green one, I think, is degradation of the brown snake. I'm not sure, but it can be classed as a variation, I suppose. And this surely has to go down as the figure with the most accessories. He doesn't have a vinyl cape, he has a cloth cape. Well, he's more like a coat, I suppose, really. Then he has his belt, his snake, and his stick. And for that reason, that is uh, why this is one of the most expensive figures to buy. Especially the brown snake version. He goes for about £60. And as for the card back, I'm going to have to go through these as brown snake and orange snake. Because the Brown Snake, you got the Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, and Power of the Force. On the Return of the Jedi card, you've got two different pictures of Yoda. And on the Orange Snake version, you've got an Empire Strikes Back and a Trilogo. Again, with two different pictures. I really hope you followed that. Next up, we have the Ugnaught. This had two different versions, a blue vest and a purple vest version. The purple vest version uh, is slightly more rarer than the uh, blue vest. But uh, again, check for reproductions. And we're back to the three card backs for this one. Next up, we have another Bounty Hunter, one of my least favourite figures. So I'll quickly go past with this one, and it's Dengar. And strangely, he has an Imperial rifle as his weapon. I mostly use as a crutch because it keeps falling over. And he, again, came on three card backs. Next, we have Lobot. Another figure that we didn't get a lot of play value out of. He came with the Bespin Blaster, which was quite handy since he lived on Bespin. And you can find him on the three card backs. Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, and Trilogo. Next, we have Han Solo in Bespin Outfit. Surprisingly, he came with a Bespin Blaster, which I don't under really understand again. Why would he have a Bespin Blaster? He has his own Rebel Blaster. It is a great figure, uh, a lot of people's favourites. It's definitely the best Han Solo figure, but it's just a shame he doesn't have his DL-44. Um, especially 
when he wanted to play out that dining room scene with Darth Vader. A bit of a missed opportunity there. And all three card backs have the same iconic picture of Han Solo stood in the Millennium Falcon. Next up, we have Leia in a Hoth gear. This is uh, my favourite Leia figure. It's a pity they didn't do the, the slave Leia, but there you go. This is the best one. Again, comes with that hard-to-find Leia blaster, the blue version this time. The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi cards have the picture of her on the Falcon, but the Trilogo card has a picture of her on Hoth. Next up, we have the Imperial Commander, which has a picture of General Veers on the card back, which is very strange. The three card backs did have the uh, same picture of General Veers, and it came with the Imperial Blaster. Next up, the Attack Driver. No uh, major variations in this figure, uh, but he did have his own uh, rifle, the Attack Driver's rifle. And this figure came on four different card backs Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi. Try logo and power of the force all with the same picture next up we have the rebel commander which is meant to be uh, cliff from chase <laughs> but uh, the figure neither looks like him or the picture on the card back and again we have three card backs of this all the same picture empire strikes back return of today and try logo next we have fall on yes it's fall on there is a lot of confusion between Fallon and Zuckus, but for us vintage collectors, they will always be the other way around. Why they bother changing them, I'll never know. Fallon is actually quite a strange figure. Um, his, his coat, his, his, not his cloak, it's his coat. It's just strange texture, strange material. It's like a, it's a slightly spongy. He has a sort of harness strapped to him. Um, it's very strange. It's plastic. Um, I can't describe it really. It's, it's all I can describe is a harness, and it comes with his own Fallon rifle. Again, this comes with the three card backs: Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, and Trilogo. Next up, we have C-3PO removable limbs. Yes, this version is the blasted version from the Empire Strikes Back from uh, Cloud City. His arms and legs come off. And you actually get a bag to put on Chewbacca's back to shove it, all the parts in. <laughs> and funnily enough, this 3PO version is uh, more stiff-limbed than the original uh, <laughs> first 12 version of the character. This came on Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, Power of the Force, and Trilogo cards. Next, we have the other version of the Bespin security guard. Again with a Bespin Blaster, and again on three card backs. Next we have Luke Skywalker in Hoth Battle Gear. He comes with the Hoth Rifle, same as the uh, Rebel Commander, but you could tell from now on that the sculptors were really going to town on these uh, these figures. The stance that Luke has is he's got one leg stuck out, so he have to have the legs apart. It's quite an interesting stance, really, because yeah, you got to put him in the Tonton, remember? But it was nice to see different designs, and uh, maybe it was this was done as a display item more than a, a playable item. And this is on just the three card backs. You don't get it on the uh, Power of the Force one, unfortunately. Next up is the Attack Commander. Yes, uh, we've already had General Veers, so uh, I don't know what this is supposed to be. <laughs> And for some unknown reason, he gets a best spin blaster as well. I really don't know what they were thinking with that. And again, just the three card backs. And they all three have pictures of just an at at. Next up, we have the first of many pilots, and it's a clout car pilot. And being a pilot, he gets the pilot blaster. And one of the most sought after accessories you can find for these figures is the communicator. Why you got this, I'll never know. Maybe they uh, designed it for C-3PO and it wouldn't fit into his hand or something. I don't know. And the picture on the car backs is uh, very interesting. It's a picture of the clout car with like just the head of the pilot because you never actually see the clout car pilot, just his head. And um, Kenna must have just used their imaginations for the rest of it, as they did with a lot of the figures. And again, he came on three car backs. 
carrying on the pilot's theme is the TIE fighter pilot. Now this figure is one of the figures I remember fondly, mainly because of the smell. They just had an unusual smell, uh, maybe because of the black plastic, I don't know. But it, uh, I could never, I can never really describe that smell. Some people say licorice, but I don't think it was. I just don't know what the smell was. But you always remember that, that figure for all that smell. Again, it came with the pilot blaster. And again, the three card backs. Next up, we have Forlom's mate, Zuckus. Whether they were mates or lovers or married or whatever, we'll never find out. Well, maybe if there's some fan fiction, there's probably some fan fiction out there about it. He came with his own special rifle. And again, on the three card backs. And last but not least, for the Empire Strikes Back line, we have Ato D2 with sensor scope. Yes, I suppose you can class it as uh, an accessory, that little blue plastic periscope. And it's the Ato D2 the majority of people, well, the people I know, played with back in the day. And again, this came on the Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, and Trilogo cards. Somebody once told me the world is gonna grow me. As I mentioned last week, I had the opportunity to visit Colville to do a valuation event at Palatoy. So I just thought I'd let you know about the uh, exhibition that's going on down there. So I'm just going to read out this article that was in the Leicester Mercury about it. Toys made in Leicestershire over the last hundred years are set to be celebrated in a new free exhibition. The many faces of Palatoy will be held at the former... Palatoy Factory in Colville, which will run from October 12th till November 10th. So you've only got actually a couple of days to visit the exhibition, but I do stress that it's a wonderful exhibition. And just talking to the people, the volunteers there, who actually worked at Palatoy. Alongside 100 Years of Toys, made by Castelloid and Palatoy, it also features Star Wars toys made in Colville. The exhibition is part of a wider project by the Colville Heritage Society, which has been made possible thanks to the National Lottery Heritage Fund grant for £68,300, along with partnership support from North West Leicestershire District Council, Leicestershire County Council Museums, Museum of Childhood, National Trust Sudbury Hall, Leicestershire Promotion and Private Sponsorship, making a total project funding of £86,500. The project will celebrate Palatoy in Colville and the people who worked at the factory, the iconic toys produced, the children who played with the toys and the collectors who have kept the name alive. Oral history memories will be collected from the people who worked for the company and archives from around the region are set to be digitised and posted on the new Colville Heritage Society website. The project will engage with schools and colleges with teaching resources and as well as the Colville exhibition there will be other exhibitions at Sudbury Hall Museum of Childhood next summer. Castelloid was founded by Alfred Pallet in Leicester in 1919 and he made his first doll in 1925. In 1931 the company was bought by plastic firm BXL and built a new factory in Leicester's Abbey Lane to make toys and other plastic products. The main toys produced in the 1930s were dolls, with Castelloid introducing many new forms of plastics to improve their look and safety. The first safe, non-combustible plastic dolls made by Castelloid were given to Queen Mary for her grandchildren, Princess Elizabeth, our present Queen, and her sister, Princess Margaret. Toy manufacture grew, and a decision was made in 1935 to register the brand name Palatoy Playthings. Two years later, a boxing club, Billard Hall, was bought on Owen Street in Coville to take the pressure off the Leicester factory. During World War II, both factories were used in the war effort, and after the war, a new purpose-built factory was built on a three and a half acre of land at the rear of the Owen Street in Coville. This became known as the factory in the garden. At the start of the 1960s, it was decided to split the BXL toy division from other products, so the Palatoy brand and staff moved to Colville, and in 1968, the Palatoy brand was bought by General Mills. Over the following years, the name Palatoy became synonymous with Colville, and the company made and marketed many iconic toys, including dolls such as Tiny Tears and Pippa, 
action figures such as Action Man and Star Wars, and games such as Merlin and Trivial, Trivial Pursuit. During the 1970s, Palatoy grew to be the biggest toy company in Britain, but in 1985, General Mills decided to stop making toys and Palatoy and Colville became Kenner Parker. In 1994, the factory finally closed and the site was sold by the owners Hasbro and converted it into a business park. Talking about the new project, Steve Duckworth, chairman of the Colville Heritage Society, said, In the 1980s, Palatoy was known as a gold mine on top of a coal mine. And that summed up a Palatoy's importance one of the largest employers in the district and a fun factory for the countless number of children around the world. We're extremely grateful to the National Lottery Heritage Fund, North West Leicestershire District Council, Leicestershire District Council, National Trust and Leicestershire Promotions, as well as private individuals for supporting this project with grants, sponsorship and help in kind to celebrate one of the most famous toy factories in the world. This project allows a community to celebrate a success story and to lay foundations for a legacy to the Palatoy name and the people who made it synonymous with growing up. I don't know about you, but I had a bit of a lump in my throat when I read that. <laughs> and it's quite good that people are actually keeping our heritage and our history alive. Because if it wasn't for them and Palatoy, I wouldn't be sitting talking about Star Wars toys today. Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode this week. I hope if you did, you will share it out to your friends. Don't forget about my uh, YouTube channel, where I put up videos of all the lovely Star Wars items that I pick up. And I'm also building the uh, X-Wing at the moment, so I'm doing a series on that. If there's anything you'd like me to talk about, or indeed if you want to uh, send me over a voice message or... Uh, a review or anything that you'd like to go on this podcast, you can email me, blueharvesttoys at gmail.com. I'd like to hear from you. So until next week, may the toys be with you. Just one more round, friend. Then homeward bound, friend. Don't forget me in your dreams. Just one more song, friend. And then so long, friend, the nights get shorter, it seems. Just one more rhyme, friend, yes, it's a crime, friend. But you know time, friend, time can fly. So it's good night, friend. Good night, but not goodbye.